I'm Christy Pelzel for Today News Africa. Joining me as Amaka Okoye, an award-winning journalist, presenter, and producer at Arise News in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining me to discuss this latest mass kidnapping at a school in Nigeria's Kabi State. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Christy, thank you for giving the platform to speak about this yet another abduction. As I understand, around 80 children and some teachers were kidnapped. There was also some deaths that took place at the federal government college in northern Nigeria. And you've been at the school reporting from the school and interviewing people. Can you tell us what's happened? What's the latest? Right, uh, Christy, thank you again for having me. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the right figures. Uh, when I say the right figures, we actually do not have any figure because officials have not been able to release you know, figures to say these are the number of students who are missing. Uh, this school, as you do know, is a federal government uh, college, which is a mixed school, both boys and girls. And it is in Kebi State, as you have mentioned, which is the northwest of Nigeria. Uh, now, um, other states within the northwest uh, region of Nigeria, of course, have had their own share of uh, bandits attack, especially in schools. However, this uh, Kebi state has not been so much in the news. Unfortunately, uh, this time it made it into the news for the, for the bad reasons, if you like, with this um, uh, abduction, mass abduction. Yes, I was in the school on Friday uh, when the governor of the state uh, visited. And I mean, having covered all of the kidnaps that you've heard in Nigeria, most recently starting from December of last year up until now, as you do know, over five or four schools have been attacked. Uh, this is one that kind of, um, there is a difference in terms of when we say other schools were, uh, you know, other schools that, that were affected uh, in the previous uh, incidents, uh, somehow they were vulnerable. The schools were either not properly fenced or they didn't have enough of security personnel, or you know, one of those things that made them really prone and become uh, quite susceptible to this attack. But in this case, this school is well fenced, Christy. It's got it's a big fence, it's got barbed wires, it's got over 20 security personnel and security personnel. But yet, I mean, yet this these bandits were able to invade the school and you know went away with this number of persons that we cannot ascertain, unfortunately, students uh, and, of course, staff members in broad daylight. And so that's what uh, begs the question, what is giving these bandits the audacity to be able to do this? What is feeling, uh, you know, this sort of attacks that we are seeing, uh, particularly why the attacks on schools? As you do know, uh, Northern Nigeria accounts for uh, over uh, 10 million of out-of-school uh, children and then being affected, schools being attacked kind of makes them even more vulnerable and the access to education is, is, is denied, you know, uh, because currently as we do speak, that school is uh, closed down for the time being. We don't know how long it's going to take them for them to reopen the schools. Uh, some of the students, all of the students, not some of them in that school were supposed to write their final exams, but they can't do this again, because, you know, they have to close down the school for security reasons. Uh, so, I mean, if you go on ground, what we've been hearing so far from people is, in spite of the fact that, yes, they are worried and concerned about the safety of their children, however, they, they've shown, you know, a level of strength that I, I have not seen anywhere else that I've covered, you know, from uh, Kankara, you know, in Kansina uh, State to Kagara in um, in uh, Niger State, to Jengebe in Zampara State, to Kadu Afaka in Kaduna State, all of these are schools that were attacked, you know, in Nigeria. I've not seen that level of strength, you know, from parents. For instance, it's a mother who's got three children, only three children, and all three children were taken in this kidnap. And she's saying, well, I believe that they are going to come back alive. I want to say thank you to the state government, you know, because they did what they're supposed to do. We had uh, security personnel who actually worked so hard that day, you know, tried to repel these attacks, but unfortunately they were overpowered because these bandits came in their numbers. Uh, according to one of the eyewitnesses, she said they're up to 300. Unfortunately, Christy, I cannot tell you the number, you know, of those bandits, you know, who attacked the school. But the, the, the true picture that we have is that these bandits were 
uh, more in number and out, you know, have numbered uh, the security personnel on ground. So, I mean, that's the current situation. Uh, as at today, we do know that uh, 12 persons have been rescued. Uh, uh, so yesterday there was intense military uh, Air Force, uh, local vigilantes and hunters, collaborative effort, you know, in surrounding these bandits. They've been surrounded wherever it is they are. Uh, but, you know, uh, the, the uh, security operatives are also careful not to uh, harm the, the, these people, the students and the you know, staff members. Uh, so 12 have been rescued, uh, reunited, I would believe, with their family members. Five were rescued before and then seven others. And we believe they've been reunited with their family members. But unfortunately, we do not know how much more are left with you know the captors uh, because as you do know we didn't have the figures the number of those who were uh, kidnapped from the first instance um so essentially that's where we are and i'm sure you're aware also of a viral video uh, uh, that is from you know one of the bandit leaders uh, saying, "Look, we are we are holding these people, and until the state government releases their own members, the bandits that they are holding, uh, if they don't do that, they will decide what to do with these people." Which is, uh, we cannot say that that's just an easy threat. It's a serious thing, and the state government is considering what next to do. How are they going to bring these people alive without you know hurting on any of them or causing you know collateral damage, as they say, Christy. Right. Yeah. I was going to ask you if the parents believe there will be a ransom paid or do they think it's just going to be a military force to take them back? But you're also brought in the idea of a negotiation for um, like an exchange of persons. So what are the parents saying about ransoms? There is no conversation uh, whatsoever about ransom uh, because uh, these people, from the information we also uh, are getting, these bandits are actually running out of food, so they can't even sustain keeping uh, these people for that long. And then they are being attacked. You know, they have already been surrounded, and scores of them actually also been neutralized. So uh, they don't have the time to begin to discuss, um, uh, uh, you know, ransom. And the state government is also not even uh, giving them that opportunity to hold them for long to begin to make that demand. So this is one uh, incident where there has been no. Um, any information there's been no any conversation around paying ransom everyone is just you know but the government and of course the bandits everybody is trying to get themselves out alive as so to speak uh, christy yeah that's great because you know once you start reinforcing people with money and they think this is a way an easy way to make money you're in big trouble um but i just also want to add that when i was researching kidnappings and global kidnappings mass kidnappings nigeria still does not make the number one hotspot for kidnappings when you look at the perspective of a total population of a country versus kidnappings per 100,000 people but i think what's striking here is that these are children these are mass kidnappings they're staged they're planned out and they don't seem to be stopping they keep happening what do you think needs to be done to stop these kidnappings in the north, these mass kidnappings, children? I mean, Christy, we must not take away the fact, which is even more crucial, if you ask me, that these kidnappings are also done in schools, uh, which which is why it's getting the global attention. Uh, because you remembered that when Chibok happened uh, seven years ago, one of the reasons why it got that global level of global attention was because it was a school. Uh, and uh, like I tried to establish earlier, the north of Nigeria uh, is kind of deprived in terms of education. That's not because they're not given the opportunity to go to school, but that's because uh, for some reasons we have the lowest, uh, you know, uh, P lowest ratio in terms of education in that part of Nigeria. Now, having said that, we've also seen, sadly, schools being attacked. And so when experts uh, the talk, the conversation is, it looks like it's intentional. So one thing that the bandits understand and the terrorists understand is the fact that if we touch a school, we're going to get global attention. You know, the world would, you know, rally around and want to say, oh, release them, or oh, whatever it's going to take to release them. Over and over again, we've had leaders, you know, come out and give words and promises. But unfortunately, not so much of it has matched it or translated into tangible action. 
So we need to see more of action. So if a state government, for instance, said we're going to do everything humanly possible to be sure that our schools are safe, then it means that it will start by you know, building fences, uh, building proper, uh, proper schools, uh, proper walls, proper uh, fencing, um, you know, manning, putting security personnel in the school 24 hours you know, a day, every time, and be sure that you have enough security personnel who are also armed. And they have you know, the weapons that can match that of the bandits. Because, I mean, again, having covered this, every time I speak to people uh, who were kidnapped and released, one of the things to say is, that, look, these bandits always have weapons that are more sophisticated than the security personnel. So that's also a very huge, huge gap. So all of this needs to be fixed and put in place uh, before we will see, I uh, mean, the end or a, a significant reduction in what we're seeing now in Nigeria in terms of banditry uh, attacks and, of course, a terrorist attacks as well, Christy. And what's next for the, the parents, uh, the family members of these victims? Who's keeping them informed about what's next? Uh, I mean, for this particular incident, I, I must say that the, the communication, there's a level of communication that is quite appreciable uh, from the state government to the people that are affected. Um, in the past, uh, what we had seen in some cases is, you know, parents were not, you know, carried along. They do not know what is happening. So in most of the cases, I've had people come to, you know, send me messages. And say, oh, journalists, are you aware where our children are? Do you know when they will be released? What next? Are they safe? And for me, as an individual, that's usually the very toughest part of what I do, because when parents say to me, do you know when our children will be released? I, I do not know. I, I really wish I had the answers, but I do not have the answers. And so for me, every time when I follow through this conversation, you know, follow through this covering of this crisis, when I hear that they are released, it, I feel the joy of the parents. I, I feel the contentment and the, you know, the happiness of the parents because it's like, oh gracious, the nightmare is over. Uh, but particularly the good news, what I've seen is the fact that the government, you know, have continually, uh, you know, reached out to the people. On Friday, when we were in that community, uh, the governor personally, you know, was going to walking around in the hall where he was meeting with his parents and relatives of whose loved ones have been kidnapped and, you know, trying to pacify them and say, look, we're doing everything we can. And I mean, I heard also parents saying, look, we are grateful that you, you came here. Coming is even a reassurance uh, for us that our children will be back to us, our family members will be back to us, our loved ones will be back to us. Uh, so I, I think what next for the parents uh, is still, you know, keeping the hope alive and trusting uh, that this uh, continuous efforts would finally amount to the release of all of those persons who uh, were kidnapped uh, in that school, the federal government uh, college in Yaori uh, here in Kebi State, Christy. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We're going to keep following your reporting and thank you for your service as a journalist to keep these stories up front where they belong. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you too for having me, Christy, and also trying to amplify our voice and let our voice be heard as well. Thank you, Christy.